Hello, party people. I am in Nashville, Tennessee at the Noel Hotel uh, doing a summit for Teachable, the training platform that I use, uh, where a bunch of us creators are getting together, we get together once a year and talk about things that are working for us, things that aren't working for us, uh, get inspiration from other creators. It's a really nice thing that Teachable does, and I'm thankful every year when I'm invited to it. Um, and so let's go through some of your top voted questions from PollGab. The number one top voted is from Bisal, who asks, what is the best way to manage roles in SQL Server in Azure VMs? I, I got to be honest with you, I don't do security work, and you'll hear that pop up a lot in my stream and my uh, blog post. I, I just don't do it. I don't enjoy it. It's nothing against it. I recognize that it has to be done just like janitorial work has to be done, but I don't really do that either. Next up, my tea got cold asks a really good question. I've only ever heard bad things said about my SQL, but yet it's often above SQL Server in usage number surveys. What am I missing? Well, okay, the first thing is that it's free uh, compared to SQL Server. SQL Server has a free edition, Express Edition, but it just isn't that well known. People don't really know about it. Now, for the longest time, Express Edition only ran on Windows, whereas MySQL ran on free operating systems like Linux. Um, MySQL, because it was free and open source, uh, got a lot of feet on the ground for open source projects. Like if you were going to build something free and open source, you typically wouldn't build it on top of an expensive database. You'd build it on top of a free database. Uh, so that, that whole free popularity thing really catches on. Um, the, the one thing that I would add is uh, McDonald's is much more popular than, say, A by Jose Andres or uh, any pick any number, the French Laundry. It doesn't necessarily mean it's a better product. It just means that it's more popular. And I totally understand why. I use it myself. Brentozar.com runs on MySQL. The WordPress installation on Brentozar.com runs on MySQL. It works great. Next up, Finn7 says, what are the top gotchas that you've seen when running migrating SQL Server on-premises to Azure SQL managed instances? Okay, so I haven't done that because every client that I've had that's considered making that jump has looked at the price tag on managed instances, especially when it comes to getting multiple replicas like, you know, a couple for your primary plus a disaster recovery replica and the ability to read from them. The cost has just been so high that it hasn't made sense for them. I believe it's a great platform. Literally just this week, I told a client that they should move to it because it made financial sense for them. It made performance sense for them uh, and they're not going to do it. And it has nothing to do with the quality of managed instances. It has to do with the expense of moving everything else to the cloud. So funny how that works. Again, I, I can't say enough. It seems like a good product for a lot of reasons. I've just never had the occasion to use it to migrate somebody to it. Uh, next up, Unspoiled says, are there any database level statistics that you would recommend to know the pressure that a single database is generating on a server? Um, our goal is to understand how much pressure that one is generating when there's multiples on a server. No, and the reason why, and it's, so there are a bunch of bad ones, but the reason why you don't wanna do that is because of cross database joins. So you can use the plan cache, for example, to measure which uh, databases have queries that are running the most often or using the most CPU, but the numbers are based on the context of whatever the database or whatever the query starts in, in terms of context, uh, which is terrible for cross database joins or for people who fully qualify their queries. You could even run queries from TempDB and fully qualify, you know, I want stuff from mydb.dbo.whatever, and it'll show up as a plan that's in TempDB. Uh, so if I, if I had to do it, the thing that I would use as a resource governor on Enterprise Edition, I would put logins into different pools, and then that way you can measure which logins or groups of logins are using the most CPU, memory grants, whatever. That's more efficient because you know you could kind of categorize them by department. 
Paul asks, hi Brent, I wonder if you're using a dedicated tool for investigating query plans? No. No. Um, Steve says, I'm Brent, I'm looking at your SQL Constant Care Population Report in spring 2024, and I can see a spike for Azure back in 2022, and then it immediately drops. Can you tell me why? Yes, I wrote about why in the one when it dropped. So if you want to go back through the population reports, if it's important to you, go back to the one where it dropped and read my analysis on it at the time, and I explain a why in there. It's not that I don't want to tell you, I just literally don't remember. It's two years ago. Who remembers that stuff? Kansas says, do you often see CLR functions or stored procedures used? No, not at all. Uh, I, it's something that I almost never see. I think I maybe see it from clients once or twice a year, and that's it. Um, generally, when I do see it, uh, it's it hasn't been, for the last like four or five years, it hasn't been the root cause of the problems that the clients were seeing. Matthias says, hi Brent, I've inherited a three node cluster and it keeps going down for all the wrong reasons. I've never built or managed a similar infrastructure. Could you point me to some resources to help figuring out what's going on? For me, start a Microsoft support call. Start, I don't know why people are so afraid of starting support calls. It's like 500 bucks and they work the problem with you until it's done. Not necessarily live in real time. They may have you send in logs. They may have some time doing an analysis. But it's so good for stuff like this when things are just randomly going down. The other thing that I would say is if you inherited the cluster, that means it was probably built before you uh, by someone that you don't know and can't contact for troubleshooting. <coughs> and in that case, honest to God, the thing that I would do is start making a plan to get off of it. Start making a plan to get onto an infrastructure that you are comfortable with uh, supporting. Because after all, you could have all kinds of reasons why the thing is going down. I've had that with clients where they brought me in to troubleshoot something really complex. And every time that we open a door or a, a, you know go look at something inside SQL Server, I'm like, that's not right. That's not right either. And just the number of things that weren't right suddenly mount up to the point where I say, I don't think the person who built this knew what they were doing either. As in, you didn't know, also neither did the person that you hire who was building it. And so let's go build a safe foundation rather than trying to shore up something sketchy where there are so many problems that we just can't even go into it. Uh, backups are important asks, what's the drawback to implementing a backup strategy that uses the read-only node of an availability group? You can take copy-only backups and log backups from there. Seems wrong, but why? There's nothing wrong with it. The one risk that people should be aware of is that if replication stops working from the primary to the secondary, you're not backing up current data. So so as long as you're monitoring for that, for replication breaking, and you can jump in quickly enough that you don't mind not having backups for that period of time, uh, then it's okay. Me personally, I, whenever I advise a client on that, I say just do your log backups on the primary. Log backups aren't that much overhead. Uh, and if you find your hardware so stressed out that taking log backups is the thing that puts you over the edge, you're past due for an upgrade. By all means, offload the fulls. You fulls, uh, knock yourself out, move those over to a secondary, but put the, put the log backups on the primary just for the, the reason that I don't want you to lose data if replication breaks. Uh, that, Steve says, with file system advancements on Windows, should we consider formatting our SQL Server drives using REFS or stick with NTFS? Um, so when REFS first came out, there were a bunch of problems around CheckDB and snapshots. I'm sure that they've been fixed. I just haven't seen any compelling reason why you would want to, to move to REFS for SQL Server. I'm sure there are for some applications. I just haven't seen a benefit where someone said, switch to REFS and your uh, storage access times will be 5% faster or something like that. If you've seen that, like published evidence, not anecdotally, but if you've seen any evidence as to why performance gets better under REFS, please feel free to drop a comment so that I can uh, link into that and help people out. 
Peter asks, hi, Brant, we've got some developers who've started slapping option no performance spool on their queries. Is this a real solution to a genuine problem or is it a workaround they can or should be fixing or using a better way? I'd ask them why. Ask them why, right? So like just generally from a life skills thing, if you see someone running a marathon while carrying a hammer, I mean, like logic would probably indicate that carrying a hammer would be a bad idea when running a marathon. It's heavy. It's something else that you got to deal with. Why not talk to him? Hey, buddy, why are you using a hammer? Why are you carrying a hammer? You know what would be an exceptionally bad idea is to grab someone else who's trying to mind their own business and has their own things going on and go, hey, why do you think they're using a hammer? Why do I care? I don't know what harebrained ideas your developers came up with in terms of why they're doing that. Why would you bother me? Go ask them. Are your developers so... You think your developers are scarier than I am? You sure about that? You sure about that? <laughs> There's your dose of humor, humor for the morning. Uh, and then we'll do one more. Let's see here. Uh, data cow. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Data cow says, alter database set memory optimized on. What benefit will we get by enabling? I understand that frequent data will be loaded up into memory. Does this mean we're going to run out of memory? So set memory optimized on enables the Hecaton in-memory OLTP feature of SQL Server. And it's something that you have to change your code or change your tables, uh, depending on which uh, outcome you're trying to achieve in order to see those goals. So search books online for in-memory OLTP, and then that'll get you to the, the work that you would have to do in order to turn that on and the specific problems that it's meant to solve. All right, there we go. There's a whole bunch of learning and a little bit of ranting there for a, what is today, Thursday. Um, I will see y'all on the next Office Hours. Adios.